What's up everyone, my name is Matthew Dale and I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And I've got a whole mess of stuff um, on my desktop here that I'm gonna show you. We're gonna talk today about how to control your fractal device, whether that's the XFX3, FM9, FM3, how to control that with a digital audio workstation, also known as a DAW. Now this has a couple of benefits uh, in the right context, um, namely if you are playing with like a click track or a cue track or like a full tracked out show. You can program all of your sound changes, scene changes, parameter changes uh, in the DAW and you don't have to worry about changing scenes or changing your sounds on the fly. Uh, also works really well if you don't want to be tied down to just standing at a pedal board all night. You can kind of prepare your sound changes earlier um, and have it do, have the computer do all of your sound changes for you. Um, this can save you the headache and the hassle during the show. However, there may be a little bit of a headache or a hassle before the show, but hopefully this video will clarify some of that stuff for you. Before we begin, uh, remember to download my Fractal Favorites Amps and Cavs Guide for an excellent cheat sheet on how to get some great tones out of your Fractal device. You can hit the link in the description box below or follow the link that's on the screen. Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at what I have going sound-wise. I've got a preset made up here. I will have this preset available on my Patreon, also linked in the description box below. Um, I've got the Bogner Shiva Clean for an excellent, very clean tone. Such a good, clean amp. One of my new favorites that I've been playing around with. I'm going through uh, Bogner V30 cabs, and on channel B here, I'll go to my lead scene. Actually, before I do that, here's my clean boost scene. I've got the RC booster set up to be very low gain, just kind of boosting the treble frequencies a little bit going into the Shiva. I uh, got a little bit of multi-tap delay going here. <laughs> really nice clean boost sound uh, and then over on scene three the lead scene I have switched gears over to the Atomica high I am boosting the Atomica high with the AC booster uh, boosting the level a little bit for a little bit of a level boost using the filter block and then that same multi-tap delay <laughs> Some good old fashioned rock and roll uh, modded Marshall sounds there. Um, great amp, great sounds. Love it. <laughs> Sounds big and nasty. Let's flip over to the DAW now. I'm using Persona Studio One. This is my DAW of choice. You can do this probably in any DAW. It might look a little bit different, but we're gonna use Studio One here today because this is what I use. I know Ableton is probably the most common DAW to use live, but I just used um, Persona uh, um, Studio One uh, live for Million Dollar Time Machine. I did the tracks all in Studio One. We ran it live and we had no issues. We had an overall good experience. So we need to add Add the Axe FX3, because uh, that's what I'm using, into um, Studio One as an external instrument. So I'm going to go up to my preferences here, and we are going to add, and I'm going to do a new instrument. I'm setting this up as an external instrument. Let's put in here, move my microphone, Fractal and Axe FX, I, 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 Axe FX3. And we want to, I'm going to just set up to receive and send to the XFX3. You should see this in your uh, pull-down menu. I have this connected USB, so it's transmitting me, uh, MIDI via USB. All channels, and we'll also send MIDI clock. Now, what this will do if you send MIDI clock, this will tell, since my song tempo down here is set at 71, it'll change the tempo in the Axe FX to 71 BPM. That is super handy. I like that. So now we have it added. It just popped up in my browser as an external instrument. We will hit OK. And I am going to drag Axe FX 3 into my timeline here. Now, these are all the parameters that just kind of come stock when you um, add a new instrument. It's all these CC values um, 
and they're basically just a generic one. I'm going to set this up, though, for a simpler device. Now, I'm going to select none of these, but what I've done, and I'll show you in a B-roll clip, but what I've done is I've already set CC26 to be my scene controller. So I'm going to call this scenes. So in the Axe Effects, I've set scenes to be controlled by CC26 on channel one. We'll keep it to channel one. And then CC27 is going to be external, if I can type correctly, external two, external control two. And we're going to use an external controller to do some fancy things here. So I'm just going to worry about these two things. You can have as little or as many uh, of these as you want. Now, because there's so much flexibility with uh, within scenes within a preset, you could do all of this just with scenes, and it would be great. Um, I'm going to show you another couple of, uh, of examples in this video. Um, so take this and run with it as you will. These are controllers now. So now we just have these two controls. We can basically just kind of put this away for now. And to also begin, now that I have this Axe Effects window up here, I'm going to go into the inspector. And I'm going to tell this song, so this song file, I'm going to tell it to call up my preset 451 DAW control. I want it to utilize this preset, even if I'm not already on this preset. Again, this can just further automate everything going on. I can do that two different ways in Studio One. First, I'm going to go into my Axe Effects track. I'm going to open up the track inspector and we're going to go down. This already has kind of a built-in program change in it. Now, if you use the table in the back of the manual, we'll see that preset 451, which is the one I'm using, is bank 367. So MIDI is uh, only operates in values between 0 and 127, or 1 to 128, depending on how it's worded uh, for that particular application. Um, but Obviously, our Axe Effects has way more presets than that, so we need to use preset bank 3 and 68, uh, so or 67, depending on kind of where it is, 451. We'll figure it out. So over here in the program section, I'm going to say yes. Every time this song is called up, I do want to change to my preset. So it starts off in bank 0 and 1, and if I go over here, you see now I'm in bank 0. I'm on the 59 bass guy. I want to go up to bank three, so I'll move that up to bank, not bank four, bank three, there it is. And then I'm going to go up to, I'm just going to type in 67, and this one, because it's 1 to 128, it's offset by one. Let's go to 68, and there is my preset called up. Now, this will change every time I go to a new song. So if I pan over to this song over here, this is actually the Million Dollar Time Machine tracks. Like I said, I did all of these in here. So I'll actually pull up a Million Dollar Time Machine preset. Here we go. So Bank 3, uh, Program 113 is You Give Love a Bad Name. Now, every time I go back to my other song, we are back to DAW Control. And changes are quick, nice and easy. Um, that's method number one. So that's just like per song. I'm going to disable this, and we will do this now on track automation. So I'm going to call up the automation, and I already added program change for the automation. You can go to add or remove, and I can remove the program change, and I can add it. Here, program change, this already comes pretty stock because it's just standard MIDI language. We will add it, close it, and now let's go ahead and drag in an automation point. So this is already set to my preset, which is kind of nice. If I want a point here that's a different preset, if I just go down one or try to without entering the value, <laughs> I'll just go down one. So 67, now this is empty, so I'm muted. And then as I play, now it pulls up. My preset. 
and then of course the tracks go. So that can be really handy utilizing it in such a way just like I did over here or what I would do over here because I'm running the entire show from one song to the next. I would do um, preset changes with track automation. That would be a lot uh, easier for this type of setup. Now, power user tip, um, if you wanna keep editing your preset uh, while you are um, kinda going back and, and changing things, disable this for right now, otherwise it will keep like reloading that preset that you're already on, and if you didn't make changes like I've done in the past, it'll be kind of annoying. So let's move on to scene changes now. My preset loads in scene one, but when we get to this part in the track, I want to change scenes. I don't need automation to be shown right now, so let's hide that. I want to create a MIDI event or a track event. I'm going to do this right here, right on where it's going to change on the beat. And we're going to go to scene two. So remember a second ago when I said how I, I put scene two on channel one CC26. This is also going to be an automation. I don't need to write any notes in here. The, the MIDI information is already going to be fired from the event. But I'm going to go into my event automation down here. And I'm going to hit this these three little button icon over here. And this is going to allow me to add a new automation parameter. So here's my scenes parameter, CC26, channel 1. I'm going to add that close it up and now we have a scenes automation uh, again back in the manual there is a reference for how scenes work in MIDI speak basically eight scenes so one two three four five six seven eight repeat one two three four five six seven eight uh, except one starts with zero so right now I've got this all the way set down to zero I'm gonna right click and make this easy and I'm gonna type in one so now every time I get to this event my preset is gonna go to scene two. And there it goes. So now I've got my clean boost set up. And again, if we check the BPM, 71, because the MIDI clock is synced. Um, let's do this a little bit more in, um, let's do this a little bit in real time. So let me also just add another one. Now here again is another power user tip. Studio One uh, has a really great workflow. So if I hit D, that just duplicates this and I can drag that over here and we'll drag it all the way down to zero where I can get scene one again and then we'll duplicate this again and we'll get our lead scene already set up because it is Pretty easy, I'll right click this and just hit two. And now, here we go, a little bit real time. This should just be my clean tone. Right? Now if I just go a little bit further up, If we go a little bit further up, we'll get our lead. And that's how we can change scenes within the DAW using automation and using the DAW to control our axe effects. Let me get the inspector out of here. We don't need that for the time being. Last thing that I want to show you is how to change something um, over time, like a much bigger automation. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to add a new one, a new Axe FX3 track in here, and you'll see why. And let's close out of this. We're going to make this a big, long event because it's going to change over time, kind of. And remember, I had this set to, um, I, I put in two parameters, controlling scenes and external two. We'll get to what external two is in my preset and in the Axe effects, but let's just write an automation right now. So go down here, same thing, three little dots, external two, we want to control that guy, close that up, and I'm going to drag this up to about 40 first, and then in my last measure, I'm going to go... 
and I'm gonna just draw in a new automation like that, and let's pull this back up so it just stays. So I have this ramp of something. Now, what is that something gonna be? Let's assign it to something. So I'm gonna go over here to the multi-tap delay, and notice I've got all of my feedbacks up to 100%, and I'm going to automate the mix and the feedback control. And this is where the external controllers come in. So I have that CC message going to external two, and that'll be good. And then feedback, we're gonna ramp that up with external two. So now the external two automation that I wrote in studio one is gonna control these two parameters. So make sure we are on channel one, and then this will update. Now you can see that the mix and the feedback are being controlled. Here it is at that 30-ish percent. <laughs> And now, if I just play this with the automation going, you'll see what happens as we get into the end here. And then that knob, those two knobs actually twisted without me doing anything, which is what we want. That's why we want to do this automation. You can do this with basically any parameter you want, um, wherever you want. It's more about the method than it is, you know, me using it here. Um, although that can be a cool effect. So I hope you all found that interesting. I am going to play you out with a little bit of this sick lead tone. Um, and I'll even go over my backing track as well. Once again, my name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. Check out the links for more information on this video below in the description box, and I will see you all again on the next one.